Hello Vicious, welcome back to my channel. I hope you all had a happy holiday and now that it is the new year, maybe you have some new art goals or business goals for your business that is somewhat in relation to art. And hopefully in today's video, we can, you know, have a tool to help you get your art goals moving forward. And I know this topic is a little bit frustrating to some artists and yes, it's about social media, but for those of you who do want to use social media as a tool to expedite your art goals in a somewhat business way, then maybe stay tuned and keep watching this video. So when you hear the word likes and views, it sounds all very superficial when you first hear about it. It might make some people cringe, including myself, but it is the fact that this is just what our society is right now and I don't know if it's going to change anytime soon and the way that you can get any discoverability or exposure to opportunities when it comes to social media nowadays is usually when you're able to draw in bigger numbers so that other companies or potential collaborators can see you or find you. And although numbers tend to be superficial, it's usually not always the case because there are actually a lot of artists out there that need these numbers in order to keep their businesses running. And a lot of artists also might want to experiment with the idea of potentially leaving their studio job one day and wanting to start their own thing, but they don't know how that's going to be possible without a community or an audience to begin with. So there is some reasoning behind why you should be growing likes, views on your posts or artwork because it helps you get a gauge of what is doing well and what isn't. So I'm going to be focusing more on the platform of Instagram today because I feel like Instagram usually is a more general hub for a lot of artists to share their work and from there they can branch off to, you know, their Etsy shop, their YouTube channel, their other websites that exist, but Instagram is kind of the main profile that people will mainly interact with. I'm going to be mainly focusing on the comics and animation realm because that is my personal specialty on my Instagram at MewTriple. That's where I pretty much share all of my personal comics as well as some of my career updates, storyboarding slash animation life, and also my journey in publishing a book. So normally people would think that if you're just generally good at what you do, you should just naturally be able to bring in an audience. Well, that's not always the case because there are a lot of amazing professional artists, you know, like there are Disney veterans, there are people from major studios, major gaming studios that are sharing their work online, but they still do not have the type of audience or community in terms of numbers that you would expect them to have. Like the correlation between skill level and audience size is not always going to be directly positive. So just know that whenever you do see art profiles or art accounts with, you know, a lot of views and a lot of likes, that doesn't always mean that their skill level is going to be what is objectively the best out there. Normally there are other tactics that kind of go into why this person was able to be successful on social media specifically. I'm just going to be talking about what I've observed from my experience as an artist just sharing my work, what has worked for me that has helped me gain views, likes, which thus later on led to followers, but do know that this correlation is not always direct either. So I'm just focusing again on likes and views and maybe engagement for this video. So one of my first observations is that comics almost always do better than standalone illustrations. The only time I do find standalone illustrations doing really well is if you are somebody who is already really big on social media and a lot of people know you for your artwork through other sources, or if Instagram was where you mainly shared your work. That's where people kind of expect this type of art from you. But when it comes to just like, again, average artists, I do tend to see that people have a preference towards comics and that those types of posts usually get more likes, 
comments, and views on the posts themselves. Some of the reasons why I find this to be the case is because usually comics are again based on stories and thus that leads to room for discussion, people to comment in the comments below. And usually when there are topics that are relatable to others, people are more likely to engage and share it with others. People might either DM you or they might even reshare your post on their story and share it to friends. And that eventually leads to more people coming to your comic because you said something that somebody else out there has always been thinking about in their head but they didn't know how to say it or express it and you pretty much said it for them and it's easy for them to just share it on their stories send it to a friend so that that person or their audience knows what they mean so they then kind of lead a direct link to you and people then come to your page and your post. And that's why I personally feel like comics have a bigger reach just even from being a very simple doodle, but we'll discuss that aspect later. Other reasons why I feel like comics might do better for maybe artists in particular is because when you have multiple panels in a comic, you have multiple opportunities to showcase different types of cartoons or artwork that express different things. Sometimes, you know, your first page might not have been your best, but maybe panel five is where you have that super cool drawing that somebody just really likes. And for that reason, they're more likely to either like or engage with your post as well. Because what I notice with my comics is usually whenever I make a comic, they might be like, ooh, panel four or five hit me the most or be like, oh my gosh, I love that drawing on panel six. So by creating a comic, with multiple panels, you're giving yourself more of an opportunity for people to like something about your work or something for them to engage with. Another thing I noticed that makes certain posts do well, especially when it comes to the world of comics on Instagram, is that usually the first panel is more appealing than the others or it's more of the attention grabber panel. So I know it's a tale as old as time when you're just trying to manipulate people into reading your whole comic or trying to consume your whole artwork, but that's just the way that marketing has always been throughout time. It's kind of like a movie poster. The way they advertise it is through sharing different types of movie posters through billboards or advertisements, or sometimes even when you're just walking around a bookstore, you still judge a book by its cover as much as we tell people not to do it, they're still gonna do it. So it kind of depends on you if you want to, you know, attract someone to your post more, if you have the option to do that or not if you feel like the sacrifice is worth it for your post. So usually what I tend to do with the front first page of my comics is I either just always have a character's face in it, frontal facing preferably because I notice if it's the back of the head or a side view, people don't really engage with it as much. And during one of my character art internships, I did learn in one of the meetings that people prefer to have a character facing you because that subconsciously engages with the person immediately. And sure, that sounds really manipulative, but I guess it works. And a lot of people on social media, again, are gonna be attracted to somewhat superficial things. I know, it sucks, but I just feel like I need to do what I need to do in order to have the chance of gaining some sort of success with this thing I worked so hard on. So if it just means having a frontal face on the first page of the comic, sure, I'll do it. And then next, another thing I notice is if you have something kind of shocking on the front page, so something that's kind of like, ooh, a bad test score or somebody just saying something shocking, that usually kind of makes the audience wonder, what is this about? Like, oh my God, what? And then they'll want to read more because they've been intrigued. Or another thing is the front page maybe makes them wonder about something. You have something on the front page that will make people or audience members wonder what this comic is about and why it started off this way. So 
Those are ways that usually attract people to engaging with your post a little bit more, staying on your post a little bit more, and then they'll have different thoughts and emotions occur in their brain that will either make them share it with others or comment on your post because they have something to say about it too. So again, that's why I feel like comics have a little bit more of a chance to gain more views and likes just because you have topics you can discuss that can make people think things. But also, just so you know, through my experience, whenever I shared comics where the front page was not appealing, like maybe it was the front of someone's face, but her eyes are closed. Or maybe if it's like a background of a scene, but there's no close-ups of anyone's face, I notice that those types of first panels don't really do as well because somebody scrolling through their feed might just think, oh, it's just a background drawing, but I don't really care about a background. Like, what do I have to care about a background for? Like, you kind of have to make the people care in a way. And again, I know it sounds really manipulative, but already in animation, that's what you're doing. You're manipulating people's emotions in film and stories. Whenever I try to make a comic, I try to make the first page engaging and not something that somebody can easily pass by and not give a shit about. So the next thing that I noticed from my experience with creating comics on Instagram is that a lot of comic artists work only really do well when they're fully line arted and flat colored. You don't need to have amazing fully painted colors, but if you at least just block in the basic colors needed to communicate your story clearly, that's fine enough to do well. So I've experimented before with doing more sketchy or doodly comics, but I felt like those comics they actually did really well when I sold them in the form of books, but compared to my fully colored comics, they just, you know, did not do as well. So I feel like these doodly types of comics will only do well if you are already an artist like Sarah Anderson, who already creates these doodle comics and they're very simple and it's straight to the comedic point. But if that's not your voice, that's not your style, I don't think it's gonna work for you, especially if people kind of knew you for something else already. So for me personally, a lot of people kind of know me for just my mixture of Western and Asian styles. So it's just a way that people already associate you with your art. So when people see my art, they kind of expect something that's, you know, either wholesome or something that's like slightly funny, but like also somewhat mature. And then sometimes I do talk about adult topics as well. So usually when it comes to my comics, people don't expect like silly, like slapstick humor stuff really. And you kind of have to make compromises with your audience when it comes to that sort of stuff where yeah, you're gonna have to keep making certain types of comics that are a mixture of what your audience likes and what you like. But sometimes you're gonna have your experimental moments that might not always resonate with your audience and if it doesn't do well, well, you have to be a little bit understanding of it because the people who are following you maybe just didn't expect that from you or it's just not something they're used to. So if you did want to make a full on transition to another style, it would just probably take a lot of time to fully transition your audience. But from what I notice again, usually the safest bet is to go for fully line arted and fully colored comics. And again, by fully colored, I just mean like at least flat colored. Also just another thing about that though that I find really frustrating is I noticed that a lot of sketchy or doodly comics might also just not do well because I feel like people who are not artists when they see these types of comics in their heads that doesn't compute as good art maybe it might be bad or even like unfinished to them but usually when you have artists who are also your followers, they'll understand the intent a little bit more. But when you're trying to appeal to a larger audience, which again equals probably more likes, more comments, more views, they might not really get it as easily as other artists. 
So that's just another frustrating fact about that. So when I talked about the fact that comics usually do well because you bring the opportunity to discuss certain topics, there are certain topics that will do better than others. And the ones that I noticed from my personal experience, and yes, I actually went into the analytics of all of my posts and I went through what did the best and what didn't do the best. And usually it regarded the topic of the post, like the art style, the art skill level for all of these comics are relatively similar, but something about the topics are really what separated these different comics apart when it came to the type of engagement, likes, and views it got. So the ones that did the best from my personal experience are societal issues, being a female presenting person, dealing with mental health, relationship moments, funny, relatable comics, touching or emotional comics, and childhood memories. So the reasons why I feel like these obviously do the best is because this reaches a more universal audience. And usually what I notice is that more specific experiences like the time my boyfriend and I traveled to Peru and we went to Machu Picchu, that's not an experience that everybody might have. Like sure, it did really great with my audience members in Peru, which hello, but do you know with everyone not everybody went to Machu Picchu in Peru it's not something that everybody has experienced but when you talk about things like not doing well on a test in school and that moment just makes you feel like a failure for the rest of your life even though that thing won't even matter anymore that's something that I feel like everybody has struggled with as a kid and that is one of the reasons why a lot of people are the way they are today so things like that resonate with people and the broader it is the more likely it's gonna probably reach somebody else out there. The only way you can specify it is through shaping it in your own story from your own life, but the topic is still about something more broad and universal. Some of the comic artists who I feel like approach these topics really well are Blobby and Friends, who talks a lot about societal issues, and What's Up Beanie, who has a lot of very funny and relatable and also wholesome comics. Another thing that I notice when it comes to comics is that usually overly cinematic or overly overly abstract things might not do as well because again you kind of isolate certain people who don't understand it and they might you know just not really understand what is going on in the comic because they don't have this certain artistic taste because let's remember not everybody who looks at your art is going to be an artist those are things that might usually do better when it's on a screen because when you have animation and more than just one picture to represent it, you have many frames to represent it, you can communicate the idea a little bit better, but let's remember on Instagram, you only got 10 panels to work with. So I feel like cinematic types of panels might only really do better if you're publishing a full-on graphic novel with a lot of different panels that could support it. But when it comes to like these short bite-sized comics that people just read on social media, they don't really care for these cinematic or artistic decisions, unfortunately. I will say with my comics, I found a way to kind of compromise between the two where I still have a lot of my panels just be more direct, straight to the point, not any extreme camera moves, but I still will include extreme angles, different types of shots, as long as it supports what the comic is trying to get at emotionally. You kind of have to compress it into something a little bit simpler to understand because again, people on social media are only here to read your thing for like less than one minute and then they're gonna pass by it. But if you do want people to engage and like your work, you're gonna have to make it a little bit clearer for them to understand within a short amount of time. So then next, I feel like people might be wondering then does the aesthetic of your overall profile matter then? Because a lot of people I notice, especially artists, try to make their whole feed look cohesive and nice and you would think that as artists we would care about that. 
But from my personal experience, people generally just won't even care for your work if your individual posts themselves are not engaging. So if you do want people to be coming back to your profile or your page more and reading more of your comics or looking at more of your art, you do have to focus more on the posts themselves and not just how they look like overall on your profile. Let me just tell you when my profile was at its most cohesive state, when I was doing the doodle comics, and that seems like more appealing from a more minimalistic standpoint, it still didn't do well because I feel like people just look at this and they immediately can tell that they do not want to follow you or engage with your work anymore because you gave them a very clear decision as to why they do or they don't want to follow you. They're like, hey, I don't really like black and white comics. I don't really like this stuff. I'm not into it and that's fine people are allowed to like and not like what they want to but when you do have a mishmash of things on your profile it's kind of like you're tricking the audience and you're kind of like being like oh you know the individual posts look good but you don't really know what my whole profile is about so it leads people to kind of have to click on individual posts of yours to see okay what is this person's profile about then because you don't have the whole overall profile aesthetic to tell them really what it is like sure they could tell you're an artist sure you could draw well but i still don't know what this profile exactly entails then they click on your post and then they read your comic and then they see that they like what they just read and then they're probably gonna read more and then end up engaging with your post, liking it, sending it to people, following you at the end of the day. So I feel like from my experience, whenever I had a profile grid of mixed types of things, where it's like comics here, individual drawing here, a little reel here, a real photo of myself here, people are kind of like getting a general broad overview of generally who I am, but they still don't know who I am because I did not make a profile grid to define that for me. So I personally don't think the whole profile aesthetic thing works. And I would again, focus more on the quality of the individual posts themselves. So yeah, from my personal experience, these are just my observations I noticed as an artist who has just posted my comics for the past four years now. And once again, likes, comments, and engagement don't always equal more followers because the people who are liking and engaging with your work are most likely pre-existing followers. But the thing is, is that when there's more engagement on this certain post you make, it can lead to more followers because Instagram will be pushing this to more people if they see that enough of people on your page are already liking this. But my caveat with that is to just know that just because your post did not do well with your own audience doesn't mean that your post is bad. It doesn't mean that your art is bad. It's just the strategy or you know the algorithm that day or in general just was not good because there are again plenty of artists that i feel create amazing artwork and they share their art online but they don't always get the proper type of reciprocation so i hope that maybe by discussing some ways that you can improve your social media strategy to come and view your work and give them the chance to decide if they like it or not that can you know help you develop an audience overall on your Instagram profile or channel or whatever you want to call it. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. If you're somebody who is interested in growing your social media and, you know, just developing your own brand or business with your artwork out there, I wish you the best of luck and I hope that maybe some of these tips helped you out because I feel like these are less obvious tips and tricks because when you're online, there's so many pieces of advice that just generally tell you how you can grow followers and grow this and that. But when it comes to artists, like what types of decisions can you actually make within your artwork that can help you gain more views and likes and then maybe more followers from that. So yeah, good luck with everything and I hope all goes well with your year and I will see you all in the next one. So peace out and stay ho some bitches.